hey look guys, Ubisoft actually wants you to be a pirate now with their new game, Skull and Bones. Um, now this game, I don't know all of the details of the development cycle, but I have heard that it had some issues. Some people were unsure if the game would really come out and all of that. Um, but it does look like we're getting a November 8th launch and we have the PC system requirements along with some confirmed PC features like global ray traced global illumination, uh, some upscaling with DLSS and FSR, things like that. Uh, but let's go ahead and just jump into the system requirements where, um, you know, I'll give a brief overview and then dive into some of the more specific details. And I get myself a little bit out of the way here. And so it's looking like for 1080p, if you just want to get in the door with low settings at 30 FPS, um, a, a pretty reasonable old system should be able to get you there with the GTX 1060 or an AMD uh, uh, RX 570. They are specifying on the 1060 the six gigabyte model. So if you have one of the three gigabyte models that might not quite be what you're looking for here. And then jumping up to 1080p at the high settings at 60 FPS, it's looking like um, you would want to have an RTX 2070 8 gigabyte and an RX 5700 XT from AMD. Those are both eight gigabyte graphics cards. Although that doesn't necessarily mean you need eight gigabytes for those settings since they did have a mix of um, VRAM capacities here. They could just be stating what those um, actually have. Now, before we go further, let's talk about Okay, what if you don't have these exact GPUs, where do you fall somewhere in between and what kind of is that performance gap we're looking at? Uh, if we jump over to Tech Power Up with their relative performance chart, um, now this chart, again, every time I bring it up, I have to mention this isn't perfect and different games don't all scale according to the averages that you will see in this relative performance chart. And it's certainly true, especially for older graphics cards. And yes, the GTX 1060 is getting a bit long in the tooth um, that sometimes on newer engines, you know, it maybe doesn't perform as well as it used to relative to, you know, newer GPUs, that type of thing. Uh, but again, we're, if we set the GTX 1060 as the baseline, we can now look back and say, okay, well, if you need that to get 1080p 30 FPS low, right, then, um, uh, what does that mean for people who are falling short of that, right? So in other words, if you have like a GTX 970, that's only falling a little bit short, so you might still have a shot there. Um, and then again, they did say uh, that, that an AMD Radeon RX 570 also makes the cut, and oops, wrong slide there, but here we go. Uh, the RX 570, um, th this chart at least has it placed a little bit below there anyway, and again, around a GTX 970. So any of these GPUs that you're kind of seeing in this general ballpark is around that system requirement. Um, but GPUs like a GTX 1650, an RX 6400 from AMD even, um, uh, and you know, GTX 770, 1050 Ti, these are all falling uh, fairly well below that minimum system requirement. And considering this was already at low settings and 30 FPS, you wouldn't have much left to do other than try to upscale. Now, maybe this is a good chance to bring up upscaling because oh, as we'll actually even see further on for the 4K ultra settings, they're even mentioning that you'll need DLSS or um, uh, FSR at the balance setting. And they're saying they support DLSS and FSR, but I wanted to dive in and find out, does it support FSR 2.0? And I have some bad news for the uh, AMD and older NVIDIA users. It looks like it's gonna be the FSR 1.0 version, not FSR 2.0. And this is straight from Ubisoft on there, sorry, Ubisoft is probably how I pronounce that, um, on a developer blog here talking about this game. Sorry, you probably hear my kids running around upstairs <laughs> as I film the video. That's just par for the course here. Anyway, um, so FSR 1.0, Hate to say it, don't know why they went with 1.0 instead of 2.0. Now, I did see an interesting article uh, at videocards.com saying that the game would support Intel's XCSS technology, which is an AI temporal upscaling technique similar to DLSS, and that would have a compatibility version for other GPUs like AMD and Nvidia for that matter. However, um, it seems like where they spotted this was in the uh, YouTube Skull and Bones PC features trailer. But when I check 
uh, that video description, it doesn't say XCSS, it says DLSS FSR. So it's looking to me like they may have initially put XCSS support there and then removed that from the video description. Now that doesn't mean that it won't be added in at some point. Uh, it looks like this would at least mean that they would have been thinking about it. Um, but anyway, that's, that's what we know about upscaling techniques. So it's only DLSS and FSR 1.0 confirmed, but XCSS at least had a hint that that might be a thing. We'll have to wait and see. Now, if you're going up to the 1080p high 60 FPS settings to really, you know, solidly enjoy the game, uh, you know, as it was intended, it's looking like, um, again, we'll scroll up from our GTX 1060, and you've got to go quite a ways, actually, you know, past some popular GPUs. I realize my head's in the way. I should jump out of the way. You know, past your, you know, 1660 Super, your GTX 1070, your RTX uh, 3050, 1070 Ti, 2060, uh, 6600 from AMD. And finally, uh, we're getting up here to the RTX 2070. And guys, that is an 85% um, uh, performance jump over the GTX 1060 on average. Again, in this particular game, it could be different. Uh, to jump from that 30 FPS to that 60 FPS and from the low settings to high settings. Now, one thing that's telling me is since, you know, it's not, um, you know, Doubling the performance would technically require, be required just to go from 30 FPS to 60 FPS, even at the same graphics settings. So the fact that it's 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 not even quite doubling the the um, performance demand, um, d despite doubling the frame rate and turning up settings, what that probably tells me is that really your GTX 1060 probably isn't going to be just locked way down at 30 the whole time. It's just the way these system requirements charts goes is usually that they'll either list you at 30 or at 60, but in reality, you know, this might be, you know, 45 FPS much of the time, but since it's not making it to 60, they just call it 30. That's how these things go. So um, that would tell me that the, you know, the 1060 probably is, you know, over 30 FPS at least a lot of the time. Now, if we go ahead and jump on over to look at the higher end of the chart, so you wanna um, play the game, not completely maxed out, but at high settings, 60 FPS at 1440p, they're suggesting uh, an RTX 3070 or uh, an AMD Radeon RX 6800 non-XT, and there is a big difference between the XT and non-XT models there. And let's go ahead and look at the kind of performance jump we're looking at uh, to go from the uh, RTX 2070 at, um, you know, that was our 1080p high FPS, um, high setting 60 FPS. And now if we'd want to set that as our baseline and then go up to our 3070 and 6800, you can see that we're passing through some decent GPUs here, you know, 1080 Ti is pretty similar to our 2070. Um, passing up a 6600 XT, which is a bit stronger. Um, now we're getting around our like 2080 Ti, which is pretty close to our RTX 3070 in performance. Um, and then our 6800 is generally more powerful than an RTX 3070. Um, you know, when they had to choose their AMD GPU here, the 6700 XT doesn't match the performance of a 3070, and a 6800 non-XT is a bit stronger, so the 3070 is kind of in the middle there, so it looks like they aired on the uh, little stronger side with the 6800 from AMD, um, but that's the type of GPU that you're looking at there for the um, uh, 1440p high settings. And then jumping up to 4K, we're seeing an RTX 3080 or an AMD RX 6800 XT but at the ultra settings, they're suggesting that you'll need to upscale at the balance setting, either with DLSS or with FSR. And um, that is some fairly aggressive upscaling. So that makes me wonder how demanding are the ultra settings and whether or not that includes the ray traced global illumination, right? Because we, uh, it, it's unclear if that's part of those ultra settings. It might not be in which case I guess you'd need even more demanding, you know, uh, up, more upscaling. But again, given that, uh, you know, we're jumping from a, a 3070 with no upscaling mentioned to a 3080 with some significant upscaling mentioned. Keep in mind that DLSS balanced is, um, 
rendering below 1440p and upscaling from there. I think it's something like around 1250p, something like that. Um, that's a pretty aggressive upscale. So that does make me wonder whether or not the ray traced uh, global illumination is there as part of those ultra settings. But again, we don't know here for sure at this point in time. Now, um, the rest of the, the um, stats here is they do mention a 65 gigabyte SSD. And notice that there is no hard drive support listed at all. Now, I bet you could install it on a hard drive and see what happens, and you can probably make the game run. But many games these days say, you know, SSD recommended, but hard drive, sometimes they still list at the very, you know, lowest possible setting. But this one's not listing hard drive support at all, so that is something to at least mention, and we'll see how it plays out. And then with the RAM, we're jumping from 8 gigabytes to 16 gigabytes. And they're saying you need uh, Windows 10 or 10 uh, 10 slash 11. It's interesting to me that Windows 11 is included on the higher recommendations here rather than just over, over on the Windows 10 bit there. That seems a bit strange. Not quite sure why that would be the case. Um, now, the other thing we could talk about here is the CPUs. So it's looking like at the uh, low 30 FPS kind of um, settings that they're saying you could get by with the Ryzen 5 1600 or a Core i7 4790. Now, if we look into what that means, the i7 4790 is a four core, but had hyper threading, so eight thread CPU from quite a while ago. That is a 2014 chip. So they're not asking for a lot there, but again, they're also not guaranteeing uh, a 60 FPS experience with that. So my guess is that it could dip below 60 FPS uh, for sure. And then the AMD G, uh, sorry, CPU that they had alongside that was the Ryzen 5 1600, which is the six core 12 thread CPU from that um, first generation of Ryzen's that came out in 2017. Now, as we move up the product stack here, uh, on the AMD side, eh, it jumps up to a Ryzen 5 3600 and then the 5600X, and that stays the case from uh, both of these two settings here, whereas the Intel jumps again at that last bit. Now, uh, going up those Ryzen's, basically the Ryzen 5 3600 is still six core 12 thread, but is just a newer generation from 2019. And um, so that one they seem to be claiming should be able to get you a good 60 FPS experience, although they do then move up uh, to the 5600X uh, as they top out the chart, which again is still six core 12 thread, but there was a massive gaming performance jump when we moved to the Ryzen 5000 series. So that is a significant step up coming from the 3600 even. Now on the Intel side of things, it jumps from that four core eight thread 4790 up to the um, uh, i7-8700K, which is six core 12 thread now. Um, matching more into what we were seeing from the AMD requirements, and that's a 2017 uh, chip, and then jumping up to the 9700K, and uh, which is honestly a, a very similar, uh, well, see, the 9700K, I, sh I should pull it up, because I honestly uh, did not prepare that one ahead of time. I guess I missed it in the, uh, in the thing. I think the 9700K is eight core, but no hyper threading. Let me double check that. Yeah, eight core, but only eight threads. So eight core, no, no hyper threading. And that was from 2018. And then our final Intel chip, which it looks like I did actually pull up prepare, uh, when I prepared for the video, is in i5 11600K, which is six core, 12 thread again, but much newer from 2021. Um, and again, the 5600X uh, staying put there from the AMD side of things. All right, so if you want to be a pirate, uh, those are the system requirements, and the game will have an in-game benchmark, so that could at least be uh, somewhat interested for testing out GPUs. If there's any interest, I know that public opinion on this game is... Uh, well, why don't you let me know in the comment section if you're interested in this game or testing it when it releases, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.